don't eat anything wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm a well done steak kind of guy, and I now and now everybody's gonna just <laughs> murder me for saying that. So, can you can you just imagine like just the life of living back then, back when our stomachs stopped developing the mucus that protected us from things like that, and back when cooking food was the norm. You know, we'd go into the jungle and grab a mushroom and be like, hey, Scott, try that. <laughs> I mean, so Scott dies and then you're like, OK, well, you're not supposed to eat those. <laughs> I mean, I hope to think that it was better than uh, like the, the worst hypothesis people can make about food. But I don't want to start my own hypothesis on how people uh, discovered uh, what food is good and not good because my uh, well done steak has already made somebody say they're leaving me. So. On that note, welcome to the podcast, guys. <laughs> We're here with Game Talk. I'm Ben. That's Rick. I'm sure I pointed that way again this time. Um, you got me in one of those two points. I won't tell you which one. I'm on one of those sides. Welcome Ben's to Game over Talk. Here, yeah, hey, you got me. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> welcome to Game Talk. We are going to be discussing... Our thoughts on the future of games and gaming as a whole because if you guys haven't noticed there's been a lot of announcements of games recently and they all seem to be trending towards one style and we wanted to talk about what we think about games coming in the future and what games what we would like to see games as the games and games as an industry do to be more diverse when it comes to what they're making and what is coming out and what we're all playing. So that's kind of the topics for today. So please feel free to join in with your thoughts and opinions. So I actually, I, I know that I was going to kind of take lead here, but looking into this more today, I think that I we're going to kind of take the lead because it just kind of fits really well with like what's up and coming in the future with what you, what we, what we discussed prior to this. And I don't know those of you who have looked at it or not, but the Steam Deck is now coming. Yeah, let's go. I don't know how I feel about it. Oh. Like, I have high hopes. I okay. really do. Because having my Steam library on my Switch would be just amazing. Right. But there, there are some concerns about that as well. Okay. Well, what are your concerns? You start uh, with it. Let's... I think my biggest concern is even though that the technology inside of it is is amazing for the size and everything like that, I do worry about some basic mechanics that people don't think of. Number one, internet connection. How well is it going to do? Will it be able to actually do a lot of the stuff that I want it to? You know, can can I jump on Forest with you and play and have a stable connection to do that while I'm laying in my bed? As long you as know? you have a Wi-Fi connection, yeah. Yeah, but like, would it would it will it be strong enough? Um. It kind of, I guess, depends, like, on your internet, for the most part. It's really dependent upon what you're pushing out. Um, more than network adapters, unless it's a PlayStation console, if that makes yeah. sense. And, I mean, there's some other... Like, the Forest may not be the best example, because the Forest is... it. I mean, that's a game... There's so many games like that on my Switch, you know what I mean? But uh, Red Dead 2, in handheld mode, would how will that do online... You know, yeah, and that's that, that's that's my concerns. Now, the idea of having a handheld that is because I love my Switch. I think I play my Switch at least once a day, and I have for a very long time. My mm -hmm. Switch is awesome, and so the idea of having all of my Steam games available on my on a on something like my Switch is awesome. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, even though there's a lot of memory inside of uh, like the top notch one. Yeah. It's still not a ton of memory. That is that is where my concern is. People are going to buy the base version and mm -hmm. they're going to be ruined. It's not worth the base model. Um at all. Uh yeah. the 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 oh my gosh. See now I'm going to be pulling it that out of my ass, but I can't remember the storage on it. The storage is not viable. There's, it's only like yeah, there's 64 gigs. 64 gigs then the medium grade is 256 mm -hmm. and then the top grade's 512 uh, the the 64 gigs that's like doom eternal right there just one game right there um, and there's a couple games you could probably download for that but they would be small in yeah. order to have multiple at one time i am i'm kind of like the weird casual optimistic on the steam deck other than the name abysmal name <laughs> 
But here's the problem, or here's my thoughts on it. It has, it will do 60 frames a second. The mm -hmm. Switch can barely do 20 frames a second. Now, I did listen to, and I'm not going to call him out, um, but I was listening to a friend talk about it on his stream, and he was saying, it's not as powerful, I might as well play my PC. Cool, play your PC. I want you to take your PC on an airplane with you and play it there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's some options that I think make it worth the money, but if you're going at it thinking you're going to be playing at 150 frames a second, Doom Eternal, with no latency, no like, not you know, it's just unreasonable. You're you're it's uh, you're looking at it as an unreasonable product. Your expectations yeah. of the product are unreasonable. Yep. And that's and that's so that's what I'm like. That's where I kind of feel about. It. Like uh, Sage said, as soon as we started talking about it, specs don't justify the price tag. Yeah, and I I, I agree with that to a point. Um, but yet again, I don't think you're paying for specs. I think you're paying for convenience. One hundred percent. There are so many times that so my my normal ritual is just a human being. Yeah, so I work graveyard shifts. So I work eleven thirty p.m. to nine thirty a.m. four days a week. Mm -hmm. So I I you know let's just say it's a work day for me. So I show up to work at eleven thirty. I work, get off at nine thirty a.m. I then kill about five hours before I go to bed, and I usually do that through gaming or through homework, whatever I've got going on. And then I usually go to bed around 1-ish in the afternoon. Mm. But I usually don't fall asleep until about 2, 2.30. So kind of my unwind and just chill out and just kind of get my mind off things. So I usually lay in bed and play my Switch. Mm. And the, the reason why that, that works so well for me is because I can lay down in my bed in the dark room, plug it into the charger, and just play it until it's time to until I start feeling my eyes get heavy and just crank it off and go to sleep, you know? I think that'd be awesome to do with my Steam library. Yeah. But yet again, is this going to be something that I buy to enjoy with you? Or is this something that I'm going to buy to enjoy for my personal use? I think it's going to be 100% personal use. There, There's no Apex Legends. There's no, like, there's a lot of multiplayer games that are not available at launch, at least, on the, the system. It's mainly single player games like Jedi Fallen Order and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh... And that's why I think that it's not what people think of PC gaming. They're thinking of like, oh, I'm playing League of Legends. Oh, I'm playing Valorant or I'm playing, you know, like Apex Warzone and I'm playing this on a console. And it's like, no, like it's not even marketed as something that you're playing competitive games on a handheld. If that yeah, makes sense. And it's it's difficult because we're going to have a lot of stuff like that. That's kind of going through it. And they i mean from what i've read and i could be wrong on this but it's it's your entire steam library is available to you not entire there are games missing like i said as previous mentioned like apex legends will not be available things like that so there are some games that are not going to be available okay because yeah because I'm, I'm i'm on the website and uh that maybe maybe it's just the wording on this because it, it does say once you've logged into the steam deck your entire steam library shows up so maybe maybe it'll be available to see but not play. Not play at launch, maybe. I do know. So, let's see. I'm gonna see what um, if I can find exactly what games they had a list. I just really so, wish they didn't call it the Steam Deck. Anytime you search for it, I get Stream Deck results. Yeah, and then also. Uh, so there's going to be a dock for it as, as well, mm -hmm. which I I mean, they're they're kind of just copying the Switch, but in a PC aspect. Yeah, with more like PC functionality. And the controllers for it are just crazy looking. <laughs> there's buttons all over the goddamn things. I wish I, uh, I wish I like made that list earlier. Now it's probably gonna take me a minute to find it. Somebody can find if somebody finds that list or, or the list of games, uh, chat, post it in the comments, please. So, but yeah, but here's the here's the here's the price point that I like though. Three ninety nine for the sixty four gig, five twenty nine mm -hmm. for the two fifty six, or six forty nine for the five twelve. Yeah, they have enough versatility that you can. Kind of pick what you want however i would 
highly, highly recommend not not playing, uh, not buying the base model at all. Yeah, I I wouldn't I wouldn't buy the base model at Here, all. Here's the other thing: it does so the I was looking at the speed. So you can actually put an MV. It, so it, so the higher models come with an MVME SSD on it. That is where that is where your loading is going to be immense, and your downloads and everything. That's just going to be what's the best model to go with. The yeah. NVMe. The other thing I'm liking about it is it's 1280 by 800 display, with 60 hertz refresh rate. Mm -hmm. All all in all, it's just it's uh, all in all the way it's looking to me is it's the uh it is literally the the switch pro that we didn't get <laughs> it is but i mean so there's ups and downs to it because yet again it will be just steam it's not going to be any other you know it, it's not gonna have nintendo exclusives it's not gonna have sony exclusives unless steam gets that deal through them um and then you know it may have all the steam games available but there's if there's games that are going to be licensed through like ea and be on like different like uh different websites and different things like that you're not going to get those through steam no you know so, so the crusades found the list it's apex legends black desert online daisy dead by daylight destiny 2 fall guys hunt paladins PUBG, rainbow six siege and smite are not available on the steam deck at launch at least okay Hey, so, you yeah, it's, going, uh, man. I mean, it, I can't really complain about that, though, because those games do take a lot. And yet again, maybe it's because the, the connection won't be as, as guaranteed. That's what I'm thinking, because it's hard to get a, a mobile connection like that uh, with to play a competitive game like that. And yeah. I, most of those games are competitive games in yeah. one way, shape or form, uh, with a few exceptions. But, yeah. And that's that's why I'm saying like I the idea the way it's marketed and the way it's designed is is literally an alternative for the Nintendo Switch to play your library like Witcher games like that like your single player games on the go without using the Switch and getting a better performance as long as you buy the uh, what was a 529 or 6 649 model. Yep. And so I mean we'll uh we'll see how it goes. I'm excited for it. I think it's a great a great thing um i'm glad that more thing because the switch is like my in my fave and in, in my opinion the switch is probably the best home gaming console out there out of like when it when it comes down to like playability when it comes down to the fun when it comes down to all of that uh, fair enough i can respect but, that uh you know obviously the switch isn't as powerful as like the playstation or the xbox and obviously the um switch itself doesn't have everything that the the no, no, pc is going to but the fact that i can pick up you know my let's play ghost of tsushima in your bedroom without having your tv and everything on you know yeah. you can't yeah. and so it's uh it's one of those things that it's just a great little tool to have and i also love the fact that i can pick up breath of the wild one of my favorite games and go on an airplane with it you know that, what i mean that's where i that's and that's where i kind of differ so like my problem is, is i will never buy a multi-plat game on my switch period like mm -hmm. if the game is released if, like they just announced dying light for the switch i fucking love dying light i will play it on a steam deck i am not gonna play a game that is has issues when it comes to frame rate loading textures rendering that can I, run under 20 frames a second consistently i on, also on think that. the other thing that kind of digs into it is that the steam deck also backs up your information through steam mm -hmm. so if you bought uh dying light 2 on your on steam you can play on your pc go to your bedroom continue playing it then the next day when you wake up go to go back to your pc and mm -hmm. you'll be exactly where you left off from your steam deck yeah and that's that's so, what I, that's where i'm like kind of at with it is like i for me a multi-plat game experience on the go with this with the steam deck i keep wanting to say fucking stream deck i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i keep wanting to say it change the name but the with the steam deck like being able to play these multi-plat games sounds amazing to me um but i will i have my switch i buy exclusive like nintendo exclusive games for my switch because that's what where what i prefer to play and they're typically optimized a lot better than like overwatch or apex on 
the console. Yeah. Um, but Emu brought up a good point. Switch still has a focus on couch multiplayer, which PlayStation uh, and that he wishes PlayStation still had. And the same thing with the Steam, like with Steam, like there's not a lot of like couch co-op games and stuff like that where Switch has those. So I think when we're looking at it, the Switch is the family home console. The Steam Deck is the guy that wants to be able to play his games at better fidelity or settings on the go. Yeah, and I also at the end of the time, at the end of the day, Nintendo's going to stick with what they're good at, and that's family and ch- children friendly gaming. Now they make some amazing adult games, and they also cater to the adults that they have been playing their games for years, like myself. Mm. But also at the same time, you know, they're gonna if you have a family and it's you know that that stereotypical family where it's you a missus and then two kids and the kids are between the ages of three to eight you're you're gonna buy a switch oh yeah 100 percent switch you know what you're getting but Um, the steam deck does make it really nice for adults like myself hmm. who is still gonna use my pc a crap load because you know i'm gonna be i'm still gonna want to stream i'm still gonna want to play with you i'm still gonna want to play with one step things like that but then also it makes it really amazing for uh you know like the personal gaming so when that adult puts kid one and two to bed they can go to their room and enjoy the gaming without causing a ruckus now i do have one big major glaring issue with steam deck and with pc peripherals do anybody anybody in chat before i start talking about this anybody in either chat just say it how many of you guys remember the steam console Uh, (laughs) i was gonna bring this up (laughs) just say like put one in chat one in chat if you remember the steam console I, I I'm not I'm not I'm not being facetious. I'm like legitimately wanting to know how many of you guys remember it. The Papa in my chat and it remembers, but Papa remembers. He should remember. Yeah, he mo- should. Mo- he, mo- he was he was selling with me. I was gonna say most people I talk to that remember it are GameStop employees. Yeah, well, the problem with it was oh, that yeah, one hundred percent flopped, Emu. You're not wrong. Yeah, the, the problem with it is it wasn't even a console. It was a streaming device. It was a streaming device for $1,000 to play play your Steam library on a TV like a console. Yeah. The problem is, is who has a Steam library? PC players. If you are a console gamer, what console do you have? An Xbox, a PlayStation, or a Switch? The problem is, is not me, even as a console gamer, I'm not going to pay $1,000 to play a console on my TV when I already have a console that I'm playing on my TV. That is where I think the Steam Deck has potential to fail in a market. If if they uh, if they market it incorrectly and they they don't deliver what they're saying, it will flop. If you like are, that. if they are marketing it towards a, a family device, everybody's gonna buy. Everybody's gonna play. No, this is literally designed for people that have a Steam library that want to play their Steam library on the go without taking a laptop that can't run their games without taking mm-hmm. a, a tablet, like you know, tablets and stuff, or packing a console, anything like that. This is so that people can play their games on the go wherever they go with their Steam library, not for new consumers. And that's yeah. that's that's what they got to stick with. In my humble opinion, I hope it's successful because I like competition and the the Switch needs competition, in my opinion, to be better. Uh, but but um, I have a lot of thoughts that if they market it wrong, like they did the Steam console, I think that's what they was even called, Steam console. I think uh, that's what, I think that's what it was yeah. called. But uh, if they market it like the Steam console, ain't nobody buying it. I didn't buy it. I was like, I might as well buy a PC for $1,000 and play that. I'm already playing my console. Well, and I, I got one for free. Um, I I got one of the controllers, which the controller was just asinine. And then I got one of the, uh, one of the consoles because I won a contest at work. Mm-hmm. And I remember hooking it up and getting it all ready to go. And at this point in time, I just had a gaming laptop. I didn't have like a... Uh, a full-on gaming setup like I do currently. But the laptop had a couple games on it on Steam, and I plugged them in, and the 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 lag from it was just absolutely atrocious. 
Um, and granted, that could have been the device I was using because I had a laptop going. Mm -hmm. But it was it was a I don't want to say it was a high grade laptop, but it was definitely not low grade by any means. Yeah, and, and the, the internet needs to catch up. Yeah, and and at the at the same time, it was just I I was just getting my ass handed to me because I was just playing these games, and the games were small, like game dev developer. Like that game does not require anything. I can I can play that on my phone. I mm -hmm. think, and it was just not working plus the controller did not work with half the games yeah and that, they, that that was the other thing they had the steam controller that was like had the mouse touch the mouth like the mouse pad thing that, that you could do with it but then some of the games were not optimized for that so you had to have a 360 controller to play on it <laughs> oh yeah that was not fun um i but i actually think emu has a good point but that the counter is um that, that there's a there's a counter argument with it as well to be honest if the steam deck was 200 dollars handheld device that you stream from your pc rather than an actual console it might almost work better in his opinion i hey. sorry i uh, the problem with streaming okay and here uh, this is this is where like i'm gonna try to keep it as layman because i'm i'm horrible with this but the problem with streaming is bandwidth, your internet. I have really high grade internet and I was using Amazon's Luna, okay? I was streaming my uh, I was streaming Metro Exodus straight to my phone with Luna with the controller playing it and giving it a shot. I pay an egregious amount of money for my internet and I still had latency issues. And that's the issue when it comes to streaming certain things to certain things like streaming a device to a device. The latency that you get is what kills streaming services like that now it wasn't horrible but it was a one second latency i would move and it would take a second for everything to move and that's where i always think it's going to be an issue when it comes to streaming uh pc to a console things like that is internet has not caught up to things like that and and i don't think it's i mean i think it will eventually but i think that they're trying to jump the gun on some of these things and i think the, there's so many probabilities that go into that as well uh, yeah. The distance you are between devices can have an effect on that. Even if you're just two or three rooms over, mm -hmm. that could cause some lag or some latency issues. Um, and then also, if one part is down, so if, you know, let's just say uh, your PC is working great, just fine in every aspect, I'm playing a game online on my PC and I decide to go to bed. And if it was a streaming device and I went, I went into my bedroom and for for whatever reason... I cannot connect through the wireless stream, but you know, it won't work, you know? Yeah. So I like the fact that it's an independent console that connects to your steam library. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that it downloads the games and then allows you to play the games. I, on one, their own. I 100% agree, but Sades brought up a point. He said, that's what killed Google stadia was latency and, and the streaming. And uh, it's not, unfortunately, what killed Google stadia is that you got no games to play unless you bought all those games again and you there was no free marketplace there was no nothing you had to buy all your games again luna on the other hand i didn't buy a single game they have a bunch of free games that you can play there's like 60 games that you can play for free and then you can connect your ubisoft plus account to it and play all those games on it so like if you have sur subscriptions you can play but their games are free i did not buy a single game while i was testing luna that, that, but for Google, you have not only the latency issue, you're right, there is the latency issue does not help. But if I wanted to play Destiny 2, I had to buy it again. If I wanted to play any of these games, I had to buy the game again on Stadia. And that's no yeah. go. No, you can't do that. Don't charge five times a game for a game. Nobody's going to play it. If I can play the game on my PC, if I can play the game on my uh, PlayStation 4 with cross, cross save, cross play, whatever, uh, and, but I can't play it on Stadia it's dead stadia stadia missed a lot of opportunities when it came to that and that's why i think the steam deck is doing better because it's not required yeah. not not re required to be connecting to some random service um things like that you're connecting to your library of your stuff that you already purchased and i think the best part about that is it's going to connect to steam directly and steam as we know it like the steam summer sale mm -hmm. things like that are like steam has some of the best deals out there mm -hmm. And there's times, like, I just bought games that I've already owned on my uh, PlayStation and on my Xbox and stuff like that that I rebought on Steam because they were four bucks. Yeah. 
and now I can play them on my PC. No yep. issues. All in one place. It's so amazing. it's it's things like that that are that are gonna be awesome. And little gimmicks like that are gonna really add up that really make the having a handheld device just super amazing. I, I'm hopeful. I'm I'm optimistically hopeful for the Steam Deck. I am. I, I, I don't want things to fail. I really don't because competition is is healthy. If if the Steam Deck comes out and, and anybody that's saying it's doomed to fail and it needs to fail, like no, like if Steam Deck comes out and obliterates the con the handheld console market or the handheld market, then Nintendo has to do better to compete. And then if it doesn't, if, if Steam Deck comes out and it's horrible, then Nintendo doesn't have any incentive to be better. And I think that's the thing that people don't realize too, is like, if you, I don't know if, I know you remember this. Back in the day, all right? Uh, they announced two consoles that were coming out holiday season, Xbox 360 and PS3. Mm -hmm. Now we didn't know which one was coming first. We just knew that they were coming out holiday season. And then Microsoft decided to rush the gun on this and just pump it out and get as many consoles as they could out. So what happened was Microsoft pu pumped out a bunch of these consoles and because of the competition, Sony then came out with their PlayStation a little while after. Now, what happened with Microsoft is since they were pumping them out and not checking them as well, things started breaking down on them. 57% failure rate. As, as a consumer, that sucked. But because of that, Sony was able to get more deals. So because I had both consoles, I was able to get the best of both worlds. Mm. And Microsoft fixed my console for free. For five years straight, buddies. And, and then... Five years was, straight. I was just living the high life. And then they were just competing with each other. And so the I think people forget that the, the real winners of the competition... Are consumers. I could care less. Yeah, I, I, I could care less if you think that Microsoft is the greatest gaming company out there. I could care less if you think Sony is. The truth is, is that I want better games. Yeah. That's that's what that's what I'm saying. Like like I, the competition's so freaking like worth it. Get get give me competition. Make it better. Make 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 Microsoft do better. Make Sony do better. Microsoft coming out with all these games that are playable for for like with uh with Game Pass and stuff. That is fantastic deal for consumers. I don't Game Pass, but I know how much value Game Pass is for consumers. Sony needs to step it up. Yeah. PlayStation Now is horrible compared to Game Pass. Game Pass is the best gaming deal on the market, period, when it comes to a mm -hmm. subscription service. And I will never deny that. But I want, but then it should incentivize Sony to do better. And that's what I hope with the Steam Deck. I hope that the Steam Deck does that. Yeah, I do as well. I hope that they, uh, I hope it does push uh, Nintendo, because I love the Switch, like I said. But as you've said multiple times, it can be better, it can be stronger, and. Not only could they make it better and stronger and do everything with it, they could then turn around and sell it How's for it going, the price they're currently selling the Switches at and still make money off of it. Yeah. But the technology's caught up at this point. Right now, they're just kind of enjoying the stagnant zone that it's in because they're still making a crap load of money. And in their eyes, they are saying, where else are you going to go? But how much money is Xbox losing out on with Game Pass just to make people use the platform? I don't think they're missing out on a lot of money. A lot of those games are like Microsoft owned games. They put all the Bethesda library, but Microsoft owns Bethesda. Um, and the subscriptions, what, $120 a year? Is that what it is? $120? Uh, I think that that's like the-, the, with, the with the Xbox like, Live Gold. With, the with Xbox, Xbox Live, Live yeah. But you think about it, $120 a year, that's two full, two full games that you would be buying from Xbox. Like say you're buying from Xbox. That's two full games that every every people that uses the Xbox gaming service um, is is getting more or less in revenue for for access to these games that rotate on a library. Plus, you get to play a lot of these day one launch games on Game Pass like immediately as soon as they drop your Game Pass. Um, I don't th know how much money they're losing. I don't think they're losing money when it comes to Game Pass. In my, uh, I'm looking. I'm looking it up right now. Um, so currently they are breaking pretty close to even. They are losing a slight amount, but it's about two percent. So like, so like based off the deals, like uh, Microsoft's paying six million dollars to have, uh, you know, Ghost of Tsushima on. I'm just using examples at this point, but they pay six million dollars for a company to put the game available on Game Pass that 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 game pass revenue has made that six million dollars back almost exactly but because of that 
uh, that 2%, they've actually estimated that uh, Microsoft has gained uh, traction in its console sales by 20%. So that's a huge number for console sales. And also their online store sales are up through like the PC um, by 15%, cl pretty close to 15%. So the, the correlation equals causation. They, they, they're, mm -hmm. they're okay with losing a little bit of the money with Game Pass because that money is making up on other parts of the platform. Yep. And uh, that's the thing is that if you if you're like, I have an Xbox, let's sign up for Game Pass. And I've done this. I, I have Game Pass, actually. I don't even own an Xbox currently. I, I had an Xbox one and I own the Game Pass. And uh, now I have it for the full year and I will definitely be getting it again because I have about 40 games that I play all the time on my PC. But also I've bought games just without without even thinking about it i'll be on microsoft's website just mm. like looking at free games to download and i'll be like oh crap you know uh i didn't realize that the witcher's on sale right now and i'll buy it through their website not steam right and you know what i mean and even though it's pretty much the same thing even though the steam i feel like steam's a little bit more user friendly uh in the end they made their money on that not anybody else uh say so game pass microsoft is doing a smart thing and trying to uh get tv manufacturers with smart hubs uh, to add xbox game pass where you'll eventually be able to play 100 percent. no yep i agree that 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 is a smart decision there i and microsoft microsoft's looking at it as this is our baby and this is the future of gaming i mm -hmm. i hope i hope that physical media still sticks around but uh that's just because Look at how many games are disappearing because of digital distribution only. Um, thanks for that link. Um, so, but speaking of gaming and Game Pass, anybody see a new announcement today with a game? Just a single game. Just one single game that was just barely <laughs> announced today. I'm just curious if if anybody saw it. But I actually, I think it adds to uh, the validity of Game Pass and other games like that. And and they're kind of being smart about it. I'm not going to lie, but. Uh, so that's probably the issue where Sony can't really compete. They don't have a PC market to increase interest in the Sony market. And the PSN library is still only available on console. That won't be able to change. They have they have put Days Gone, Horizon Zero Dawn on PC. Um, and they they have said that they're planning on moving more games over to PC after ex, after periods of time. Yeah, Ghost of Tsushima is coming this year. So I think the end for PC. Yep, I didn't. I, haven't, I haven't seen that. That's yep. Interesting. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I just I read an article on it. Um, I want to say last week. But there was uh, while you're looking that up, there was a game announced today. That's uh, Tom Clancy's Call of Duty. <laughs> yep. And uh, but it's free to play. And uh, I'm noticing this trend here. And I'm going to play devil's advocate because in tandem with this, there was a post that was being argued about. And I don't know if any of you guys, and like, I'm not going to, like, I don't, I'm not going to name call her because of the clout or anything, but I noticed it from her. So if it was going before that, please correct me. But I saw Lana Pierce post yearly games are not easy to develop as much as people think they are. 100% truth. And it started this argument of annualized games and live service games and people cop copy and pasting these games 24 7 yeah it's going to be coming out this year or next year for ghost of shishima okay cool 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 yeah so what happened was uh it doesn't have the exclusivity badge anymore so that's been removed mm -hmm. and uh sony and then uh the uh the gaming developers and the publishers and everything like that are, are in talks right now and so the they're they're expecting next year there isn't a set date on it but they're expecting next year but it also could be the end of this year just based off of how fast they work out the how deals fast it works that's not bad yeah. that's not a bad deal move more more games on platforms love it uh but uh yeah so uh the argument was fifa comes out every year and it takes yep. a lot more to develop uh than people think which is truth i'm not a game developer I could tell you I cannot make a FIFA game, but I know what I think would be better for a FIFA game. And I know that that's where I think we kind of draw those those trends, those correlations. And uh, we talked about it a little bit on the last podcast with Ubisoft going more free-to-play market and pumping out these games. 
um, that are more free to play. And here's another example of a game that's a free to play arena style, more like Call of Duty, Tom Clancy game. And the argument is always going to be they're being lazy. And I agree what people's sentiment is. However, they're not being lazy when it comes to the game. They're just trying to capitalize on the trend that every game has and it has been doing. Yeah, we're, uh, we're talking about X Defiant. Yes, we're talking about X Defiant. So, okay. So I'm going to break this down for you guys. Okay. Um, and you guys can look this up. Um, Sony, how much do you think Uncharted 4 made in one year? Everybody's like scrambling on their PC right now. I just hear right. keyboards clacking. Do you 100 million? Definitely not. That's not even in this lifetime. Charted 4 in its first year sold 2.7 million copies in its first year. Lifetime sold 15 million copies and it was bundled with the console, okay? Okay. In the debut, what was it? Debut of May, it made $56 million at launch, okay? At launch. In the first year, it made almost $500 million in sales. Was it $500 million exactly? I want to get the exact number for it. It was like almost that. I want to say it was close. Yeah, so, and uh, it was a key contributor for them making $427 million in operating income. Sony. Sony as a whole made $427 million in the first year of, of Uncharted's release. Okay, Uncharted 4. You guys want to know how much Grand Theft Auto 5 made in one month on shark cards? One month. $500 million in one month on just shark cards. Shark cards. Not revenue, in from, not revenue from the game itself. Like buying the game, people buying the game. Just microtransactions. In uh, 2018, Fortnite had its first Battle Pass release. And in just the first couple days, they sold more than 5 million Battle Passes. This is why games are going free to play. This is why yeah. companies are pushing out these quote-unquote cash grab games or these copy and paste games because the money speaks. The money talks. More people are paying more money to play God, Grand Theft Auto Online than they are buying Uncharted. Like, and that's the industry trend. So if, if all these companies are pumping out games that are like more live service, the revenue shows. And that's why companies are focusing more on that. Yep. It's, I mean, it's crazy too. Cause like looking at this, I'm, I'm just looking at this right now. Uh, so in 2018, they sold 50... 50 million dollars worth of battle passes when it first came out but not only that they sold another 50 million dollars in skins so a hundred million dollars in literal just skins and for just digital content and, and microtransactions this is why and that is that, right. that was in 2018 this is why the That's games not even now games have ch changed this is why ubisoft has decided to focus more on a live service free-to-play market because it's more profitable i don't blame them yeah it's more profitable and that's 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 why like i don't i'm not gonna say that these games are easy to make because they're not but what is gonna pay the bills for the next five years what's gonna pay the bill what's gonna help you produce enough money to make the next game that might flop how much money do you think they paid to make hyperscape and that game flopped but i'm sure they made their money back just in microtransactions it's it's crazy too because a lot of people forget the business side of gaming uh you have no idea how many times uh when i when i was working at gamestop as a store manager i'd interview somebody and i a question i'd ask him is be like you know what's your five-year plan you know that's a pretty average question to be asked in most interviews yep and everybody would come out and they'd say well i'm actually going to school to be a game designer 
you know, that's that's a huge thing right now. And and companies are looking for an ass load of people for that for those projects for, mm -hmm. to keep servers running, to keep things like that. But a lot of people have these dreams and these aspirations that video game design is this idea that you have this idea for a video game and you go out and make it and then it's the next Skyrim. Mm -hmm. The truth is, is that you have this idea for a video game and as a video game designer, you have no power to make that video game unless you're doing it on your own. Yep. Who's paying the bills to make that video game? Yeah. You can go to your bosses, you know, let's just say you work at Ubisoft, you're contracted through them for a small amount of time. You're not a full-time employee. Yep. Like if you if you look at these vid big video game companies, they do this stuff and then they contract employees out. So, in the end of it, you're not going to make these amazing games that you have these ideas for because you're not going to get approval because they don't pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Ubisoft, uh, Bethesda, well, Microsoft now, um, like all these huge game designing companies and publishers and everything like that, they have a board of directors that make all the decisions. So I can sit down and I can come up with this great idea, go to my boss with it, and he'd be like, hey, that's a great idea. And then his boss goes up with it and it's up the chain. But once it gets to the board of the directors and they say, well, it's, you know, it sounds like a cool game, but it's not going to make us money. So the answer is no. Yeah, it's good. It's going to be a cool game. It'll sell maybe a million copies and we need it to sell 10 million copies to even get back our return on investment. ROI, yeah. ROI. Um, and yeah, like, and I'm not saying that like these games can't be better. I'm not, I'm not, like, FIFA can be better. Kiss was saying WWE 2K. Yeah, WWE games could be better. Like, they had to take a year off because of how bad the game was. Granted, there was a lot of outside yeah. sources on on why that game was so bad. But, like, like, like that's what I'm saying. Like, they, it's not that these games are super easy to make, but, like, they make a lot of money, and that's the difference. Um, and then, Emu, I'm going to get to your comment in just one second. But JC says, so basically, that's where they make their most money. Not just the game, but the skins and the stuff that you buy for the game. 100%. That, that was where that, that's where the battle pass, not battle pass, uh, uh, season passes started coming from to help generate more revenue for that game over more periods of time, if that makes sense. So like you buy the game, but then you buy a season pass for 60 bucks. So you bought the game twice more or less, and they get that more, they get double the money for the one purchase on the game. Now it's more microtransactions and stuff like that. Shark cards, uh, skins for things, battle passes. But how many of those battle passes did you buy and never get a finish? How many, how many, how many events did you pay to play in and never get a finish? And that's why I said like when we were talking about Halo, Halo being better than everybody else at that point. Uh, because yep. of that. Because I buy a battle pass and I get access to that battle pass forever. I buy five battle passes. I have access to that battle pass for forever. I am not losing out on my money. And that's why I, I think... There's companies that are doing things that are getting better and more um, more consumer friendly when it comes to these practices, but it's it's gonna take time. And we're we're in this weird transition period where more companies that weren't doing this are now doing it. Uh, Ubisoft is a big example where they weren't on board with the live service games as a service. They they did the games as a service, but like the live service free to play market. They're now getting into that market. So it's going to be a weird transitionary period. And in five years, there's going to be a different trend. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, well, like, I mean, let's just, let's just break it down to overall costs here. Uh, in 2019 is when Modern Warfare came out, which mm -hmm. is when Warzone was released. Um, and uh, even before then they had like the, they had the Call, Call of Duty, like overworld, but Warzone was released with Modern Warfare. Hmm. Um, and the overall cost of Modern Warfare in 2019 was $250 million. So it got some $250 million to make. In the first week, it, it they they sold enough to make $500 million of the game itself. And then Warzone itself, um, I, I only have 2019 numbers, but Warzone alone made them an additional $550 million that year. And uh, but like, how much did, did does it say? How much it costed them to make Warzone? Uh, no, it, it's just going off of the uh, the because Warzone was a completely warfare. yeah Warzone's a completely separate game. So I'm wondering like if that that 250 million for war uh, for Modern Warfare is also like representative of what would be to make Warzone. Does that make sense? I, it 
Yeah, and I, I, I can I can't say for certain that it is, but I'm I'm assuming that that that's what it is, hmm. just because of the fact that uh, they came out because Modern Warfare came out and it was just the story mode. There wasn't like the the Warzone wasn't released yet, hmm. but then it, Warzone was free for everybody. Back then, it was free for everybody when you owned Modern Warfare. You just got it as an attachment, and then it became free to play after like I think it like it was like a week. Two. Yeah, it was like barely yeah. fast. And so, but everybody, you just got like early access to it if you owned Modern Warfare with it. And so people were buying it up, though. People were going crazy for Warzone. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'll, I'll admit, it. yeah, uh, I'll admit that, uh, like, though, I, I actually was kind of excited for it because uh, I think it was Black Ops 4 is when the first Call of Duty Battle Royale, Battle Royale was, was released. And it was okay. It was better than Fortnite, in my opinion, and that's why I played that one the most. Um, but I also, Battle Royale and me don't get along, but then Warzone came out, and the only gripe that I currently have about Warzone is the fact that it just never changes. Yeah. But then but then everybody says they're lazy devs because, like, they're not doing things, and I'm like, you know what? I can't tell you how to code a Battle Royale. I can't tell you how to patch a Battle Royale. I know that they should have anti-cheat. But I can't tell you how long it took them to actually make Warzone. I don't know how long it took them. I know it wasn't a copy and paste because if you look at what Blackout was, Blackout and Black Ops 4, their Battle Royale, compared to Warzone, it's completely night and day different. So it wasn't a copy and paste job for sure. Yeah, and I think that that's another thing too is that people... There there are definitely some copy and pastes. Uh, Warzone coming up with uh, Cold War. <laughs> literally a copy and paste with new guns well they they, they wanted i and I, I i i well i i could i get that argument because they wanted to keep warzone as a as a separate entity so you don't have to be buying black you don't have to be buying black ops to play warzone anymore you don't have to buy the next yeah. call of duty to play warzone and i i love that idea yeah that's a great idea but i wish they would have changed it you know i wish they would have at least changed the map yeah oh, i want to know i just think like that. okay we said this i'm not even joking in the like what last two podcasts Yep. Give me a new Warzone <laughs> map. I want anti-cheat. I want anti-cheat. I want you to crack down on cheaters. And I want a new map. I'm I'm begging on the third podcast in a row. And I'm sure everybody's going to get tired of hearing this. Um, so I, I do have a couple comments. Did you have any comments on on uh, on your end? No. Okay. No, you're good. So, uh, so we got uh, Emu going back to the previous uh, talk on uh, what Sony should do to compete with Microsoft. He says... Am I thinking that Sony should create or adapt their subscription service so that you, if you have a PlayStation Plus or PSN subscription, it gives you access to uh, on PC as well. PlayStation Now does give you access on PC to an extent. Um, mm -hmm. And then that, that's what I'm saying. They need to be better with it in order for the for the marketplace. If, if everybody can play a PlayStation game on any platform, it's still more money for Sony. Um, with the, even without buying the console. Um, and that's why I think about it. I will justify this because, you know, now that I work in the tech field, there is so much more that goes into it than people think that there are. Just having like a different service available. Microsoft putting their games on like a Steam library, like a service on the computer and on the Xbox, there's a lot that goes into that. Mm -hmm. It's not just a copy and paste and then it's open there's licensing that you have to get mm -hmm. in order to in order to have a game on the pc and on that even if you own the game you have to get licenses through the pc you have to get licenses through all that stuff and any of and the then, cells like if you buy a playstation game on the pc that goes to so that goes to sony yeah and then you also have to uh not only get all those licenses and all the technicalities of that but there's a lot of background work that has to be done. You have to have people running the servers. You have to have people doing that and managing those things, watching mm -hmm. the traffic and then managing that traffic. And even like the most techie people in the world don't realize how much work goes into things like that. You can come at me and you can say, oh, it's just a click of a button, but it is not. There's legalities along with the tech side of things. Oh yeah. Oh, it's always going to be, it's always going to be higher than my understanding. I just, I know I know that it's not as easy as I think it is, or like our most people think it is, but I, I also understand the limitations of my knowledge. Um, Emu also said, opening up games to a free-to-play allows more people to play the game. One, you have people to go, yeah, I'll try it because it, it's free. Instead of it, $60, is it worth it? And two, people that can't afford the $60 game can still spend $35 in-game 
or buy like ten dollars a ten dollar battle pass and stuff and still pay revenue for that game uh people paying 35 dollars is better than one paying 60 agree agree that's what i said like free to play like that's what i think is going to kill uh what was it that blood hunt that blood hunt i played game was fun i loved it no not it's it's free to play but it's no cross play limits the player base um and that's why that's why i think the concerns are you should not have free to play games anymore you should not have a free to play game that is not available in cross play at launch period if if that uh what was it, x defiant or whatever yeah if that game is not for cross play i don't know i'm gonna look into it more but if it's not cross play at launch it's doomed immediately dead dead period what made warzone profitable or what made warzone popular is launched free to play launched cross play period yeah that's all because everybody could play it yep now apex and is cross play apex wasn't cross play and warzone was let that sink in yep um so i i yet again i i agree but also i do understand the technicalities behind that oh, yeah. because it's it's very difficult to create a game and have it be this large title that's supported only by microsoft you know and then microsoft is like cool we are 100 percent behind whatever this is and then they're like we want to make it cross play microsoft then has to go through sony on you know pc things like that i'm not saying it's impossible but what i am saying is i i do understand why things do come out like that that aren't yeah like cross cross play right then and there absolutely uh one thing i do hate um about that cross play enabling is sony is not playing ball for a perfect example you can play borderlands on all platforms cross play but a playstation platform because mm -hmm. sony won't play ball and that breaks my heart um kiss uh kiss said they released battlegrounds which they think would have been a year uh game to play the reason why i haven't been in it it's mainly just a story mode so they released uh, they released another game in place of a annual release game in hopes that people would play that and feel satisfied until they could fix the next year really release game and it was not what kept up to expectations so now people are looking towards a different game and I, I agree. That, that happened with uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, if you don't remember. Assassin's Creed Syndicate came out, and it was good, but it didn't feel... It didn't wasn't good enough for people to make Ubisoft... Or ma make Ubisoft uh, happy with the product and consumers with the product. That's why they stepped back and started dividing um, and splitting up uh, out, of, out of the yearly release windows for Assassin's Creed. Um, yeah. So, and, and actually, to, to comment on your uh, Sony not playing ball, I'm hoping that does change soon. Because, yeah. well, Sony's in the middle of being sued uh, for creating a monopoly. Yeah. And uh, Sony is... Uh, I, I, I don't know how that's going to go, but... The, it's a scary time. The, the charges are... They're pretty stuck on Sony. Sony's not going to go anywhere, obviously, yeah, if yeah. anything goes through. But what will happen is that will have to change. And mm -hmm. the reason for that monopoly is, yet again, they're they're really focusing on not playing ball with other gaming companies. And mm -hmm. also the fact of their Sony online, they uh, they won't allow other companies to purchase digitally through them. Yep. They will only allow that you have to go buy them you have to go buy stuff through them and you have to pay money for that to be seen on the store on a front page news or anything like that you have to pay for an advertisement on it yep. yeah it's not fun I, I with all the lawsuits going on between companies right now it's it, it's gonna be interesting um jc says uh just in warzone and cod just to get skins or a battle pass it's like 20 bucks and how many seasons i see that they make some serious money alone but so they can afford to give the game for free um you're you're not losing um you're not losing anything because they make enough money on a free-to-play game that they don't have to worry about charging for the next expansion or the next anything because the battle passes and stuff like that pay for those next expansions and that's that's what i was saying with uh assassin's creed if they're going to go to a live service with assassin's creed they need to make sure that expansions are free or else people aren't going to drop away period um so 100 percent we're we're all on the same we're all on the same board here guys i feel like i feel like between me rick chat we're all pretty much kind of all on the same same thought process yeah you you guys can make these games they're not copy and paste 
but you guys are making enough money make sure that it's worth it to us you guys are making money from us regardless whether it's ten dollars or sixty dollars make sure that the product is worth it yeah and like here's the thing is if they, if they make a free-to-play assassin's creed and then you have microtransactions that you purchase i'm okay with that as long as they don't skimp out on a couple things number one gameplay i love the gameplay of those and if they cut back on the gameplay to make it more friendly for everybody rather than just like have it fun then i'm going to be upset about that and number two storyline that's why i play video games i could care less about playing with other people i could care less about battle royale mm -hmm. for some people it's a big flex for you to like oh you know i i can get first place in call of duty i could care less about getting first place so my thing is i like to joke around and just be weird mm -hmm. but in assassin's creed that's one of my favorite stories it's one of my favorite like directions a game has gone and i've been playing assassin's creed since i was in junior high and i don't think that's ever going to change even though i'm kind of upset with the direction they've moved in some of the games i'm I, i'm happy with the with the whole series as a total yeah but if they do a free-to-play and they they kind of go lackluster on gameplay and storyline then at that point then yeah it is just a, a just a cash cow but if yeah. they do, if they decide to do a free to play or something like that with it, and they continue upholding those standards, you'll, you're damn right I'll buy a battle pass every season. Yeah. Uh, well, as long as I can, uh, you know, not lose my battle pass. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, em Emu thinks, uh, so he's, he says, I'm going to step on a couple toes here. But I'm kind of hoping that subscription services like Ubisoft go a step further. To where you buy the game directly from Ubisoft, but you have it available on all platforms that you that you have, with crossplay or cross-platform enabled. In a perfect world, yes. I 100% I agree. In a perfect world, if I could buy one game, like I buy the game physically for my PlayStation Five, but I could play it on any platform I want to play, I am totally I'm totally on board with that. We just know that will never happen, unfortunately. Because not only is it a money thing, but also yet again licensing um and everything like that because if you buy it through ubisoft that's great ubisoft makes their money but when i buy my game on even the hard disk copy of assassin's creed on playstation sony Sorry. takes a small cut of that yeah. ubisoft gets a large chunk of that and the distributor whoever you bought it from gamestop or sony online whatever gets a, gets another chunk of that i think we need to, so, i think we need to do the gamestop podcast soon yeah i i think so so i it's uh there's a lot that goes into that. So I I feel that in a perfect world, that would be amazing. It would be perfect to go through Ubisoft, buy Assassin's Creed and own it on my PC, my Xbox, my PlayStation, and then my Switch. But currently, I don't think that's gonna happen. I agree, I agree. Um, JC, uh, JC says, Rick, I'm in tech too. And I see that how much more it takes for all these loopholes and legalities. And everything that goes behind in creating everything's has to go up a ladder unless you have the cash to fork over and the manpower to create the, a good game yourself too much goes into it where i can see why they have to do what they do like why companies have to make sure that that like everything's checked and balanced between all platforms are all 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 things to make sure that everything's uh fair consumer or not even consumer wise profitability wise business wise um, yeah, and at the, at the end of the day, too, that goes back to our original point about competition. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if Microsoft is doing so amazing and so fantastic with their online services, that's great on them. But that just means there's room for improvement on Sony's side. Oh, yeah. I, I think so. Like, I think where we're at, where, where we've come to uh, with this is we're all in an agreement. The, the Steam Deck seems interesting as long as it's as long as it can can stand on its own and be decent. And, can, yep. and, and makes Nintendo better. Uh, Free-to-play games are good as long as they can come out and be decent and make other companies com uh, compete to be better. Single-player games can be good as long as they come out and are decent and allow uh, allow for healthy healthy competition. What we're what we've kind of gotten to here is we are okay with how a game comes out, whether it's a free-to-play or a live service or or you have to buy it straight out or anything like that, as long as it is a solid experience and allows for a more consumer friendly future with other games and other companies. Yeah. 
And I, I'm, I'm looking at your chat as well right now, and I saw, I see JC just posted that Nintendo needs to jump on board. <laughs> and uh, here's, here's the facts, JC, and I, I know a lot of people don't realize this, but Nintendo's been around the longest, and I always refer to them as the godfather of gaming. 100%. Back five years ago, they did a, they did a report with all of their profits, and if Nintendo shut down production of everything, 100% didn't have, didn't make anything else, didn't sell anything else, and they kept everybody working for them, they could keep their doors open for 15 years and still pay all of their employees with yearly raises and for the next 15 years. Yeah. All their salaries and everything. Nintendo is killing it financially. And Nintendo is not a hard, a huge hardware company like sony is sony makes everything from video game consoles all the way up to tvs to different appliances microsoft as we all know makes everything from computers all the way to computer chips to accessories nintendo makes gaming yep. and so they have licenses and other things like that but at the end of the day nintendo is kind of like they've already won this fight that's why they're never in this because they don't they don't need to fight uh, nintendo's on their its own playing field nintendo will always be in the corner and that's why i think steam deck coming out opens up the playing field for nintendo go oh there is competition if the yeah. steam deck's good and and the thing is is that that will help improve the console overall i think that'll get us the the switch pro that we've been that people have been looking forward to for so long 100 percent but also at the same time, yet again, Nintendo will be like, ah, oh, we're fine. Because they have three titles that make their company. And no matter what you say, these three titles beat every other game in the world combined. Mm -hmm. And those three titles are simply Mario, Legend of Zelda, and Pokemon. And those three titles alone make more money than most of the games out there do their, in their entire lifetimes. Ajax, uh, Ajax... Uh, made a post. I just, I just don't think a five hundred dollar handheld PC will run as well as it's expected to. So I think it's running sixty frames a second. And you can play your games from your Steam library. It's beating the, it's beating the Switch. <laughs> like period. As long as it can run sixty frames a second, it has to beat twenty frames a second, and it's beating the Switch. And that's competition. That's what I'm. That's what I'm more <laughs> excited about. So um, and like for me, my my thing is is that uh, if they can if they can bring. If, if, with the Steam Deck, it's going to be a qua uh, quantity over quality, where the Switch is opposite. They do quality over quantity, because like yet again, Mario, Pokemon, Legend of Zelda, they have a very strict Q and A series where if it fails one thing on their Q and A, Nintendo will be like, no, redo it all. Yep. Um, which has worked for them, and they, that's why Nintendo games are usually some of the best out there. But also at the same time, if you have a console that's a handheld that runs stronger and then has 4,000 games on it, even if only 1% of those games is good, you're still making just as many games as Nintendo that has that are good. You're just making much more at a time. Oh, yeah. Um, so people are saying that they still think it's going to flop uh, right away because of how their operating system, again, Linux is dying. Um, and then uh, Ajax with the Switch Lite being a two hundred dollar price point, though I feel like it will still lean, uh, still lean toward the Switch unless you are a hardcore gamer. And yeah, that's that's kind of where we started with this podcast. If you guys missed it, um, this will be back up on YouTube. If you guys are watching on YouTube, thanks for watching on YouTube. But um, that's kind of where we started with this. Was uh, they 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 need to make sure that they market it to the correct correct consumer with the stream with the stream deck with the stream deck with the Steam Deck. They need to make sure they market it to the correct consumer and are and uh, it'll be fine if they are if they're going after uh, casual gamers and things like that. They they cannot touch the casual market. This is 100% for a hardcore, hardcore market to play 60 frames a second, Steam library, single player games on the go. That, that, as long as they stick with that, they're golden. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us and enjoying the podcast. I'm Ben. That was Rick. Feel free to subscribe, anything like that. If you guys enjoy this video, think about giving it a thumbs up. You know the drill. Um, thanks, Rick, for joining me for this podcast. And we're going to get back into doing this more often. Um, hopefully, we'll keep the updates going on that. So you guys can watch us live on Twitch which is where we're doing this right now. So if you guys wanted to be a part of the chat discussion, join us on Twitch. Um, thanks again, Rick.